So our next talk is titled The Detrimental Effects Experienced by a 5G Millimeter Wave 1x4 Antenna Array when integrated into a smartphone. And the speaker is Professor Chowian Desmond Sim from the National Kaohsiung Normal University in Taiwan. Oh, sorry. Are you it's okay then, Fengqia University. Oh, sorry, okay. Fengqia University, yeah. Taiwan. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's all right then. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Desmond. Uh, here's my title of my, of my speech. And uh, because I got about 50 slides, so I, it's better than I, I begin now. Uh, so here's the content. Uh, I'll begin by some introduction. Next, I will introduce the, the white band uh, array antenna that we have designed. And then followed by uh, discuss the detrimental effects by this, uh, this array when we put it into a, a smartphone and the effects of uh, filling up the windows with a ceramic. I'll talk about windows later on. And last but not least, the, uh, the conclusion. And here, uh, the story begins with a paper that we have submitted last year, uh, which is now uh, been uh, published in May this year. Uh, it begins with the reviewer, and uh, he asked me a question and says that, now we have built a one by four a millimeter array uh, at 28 gigahertz. What happened if you put this AIP, this antenna, into an actual smartphone? And when he asked me this question, I, I was like, okay, so let me do some research on that, and that's exactly what we will report today. So, so before that, we, we realized that uh, a many complex size uh, uh, the old, uh, millimeter with antenna array, especially for the AIP technology, uh, has been developed. But then, then the question still remains. As what the reviewer says, uncertain is the detrimental effects experienced by the 1x4 antenna array. And if you look at this, uh, uh, an actual smartphone, you'll be able to see that there are lots of uh, other components, such as the window, the display, the PCB, or the, the, the batteries, the real glass. And if I try to put my, my AIP somewhere at the, uh, the side of the, uh, the smartphone, then you should be able to see that there is an effect on them. So, so if you look at some of the papers that has been published uh, back in 2019, you'll be able to see that uh, uh, they'll try to cut a window down here, and then try, to, and in this design right now, they use a Vivaldi design, and then they try to, to cover this Vivaldi design using some kind of plastic. But then the, 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 the authors of this paper doesn't discuss on the effects after you put the Vivaldi and that antenna and try to cover it with the green color, uh, uh, plastic. Uh, in fact, it will affect the radiation pattern and you'll see it later on. So the next design in here, you can see that it's an open window down there. And from here, you can see that there's another design from uh, Professor Huang, Huang Li Yang from Shanghai University. Uh, he designed a, a two by uh, four uh, array antenna and tried to put it at the four corner of the smartphone. And here are the sub-six giga antenna and on both sides here and here is the uh, is the 4G antenna, but then still, uh, Professor Young doesn't talk about or discuss uh, what happened when they try to put a cover on top of the uh, millimeter wave antenna. And if you look at the Qualcomm AIP, you'll be able to see that when they try to introduce their first, very first product, which is a QTM052, you'll be able to see that they try to cut a window down here and try to display their, 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 their performance of their antenna. But then something came to our mind because of the reviewer that what happened if this, this window has been covered by plastic or some other things. So uh, we look at the, some of the uh, uh, X-ray uh, uh, pictures taken from the uh, 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 Galaxy S10 uh, Samsung phone. You'll be able to see that from, from this X-ray, you'll be able to see that there is this uh, uh, non-metallic window somewhere around here. And in here, now remember for at the moment, right now, for all the 5G millimeter wave antenna, you have three sets of uh, a module, uh, two on the sides, uh, one in here, one in here, and the other one at the, around the corner, uh, laying flat. So uh, if we look at the design, uh, especially mentioned by the, the Apple, now Apple actually has for iPhone 12, has got eight design patents for, for the US version, which means for the millimeter wave version. And if you look very carefully, you'll be able to see that for the millimeter wave version, you can see some kind of a window down there, as you as, as can see, see in here. So now, the question is, why imposing such millimeter wave window? So we'll give you an answer for that, but before that, let's go back and look at the two by two 
uh, a chip antenna for a millimeter wave antenna. So it, it, it found that from one of the block by Similia, and it says that uh, if you try to put a two by two antenna array uh, and try to cover it using a plastic cover on top of it, as you can see from here, if you if it's able to see that there will be an air gap between the antenna and the, the cover, somewhere between there will be an air gap. And still, because it's we are in millimeter wave, and within this air gap, there will be some kind of a traveling wave that goes from somewhere from here. This is the antenna. It's trying to propagate from on top, and then but then because of the air gap, then this somehow it, there will be a traveling wave that goes all the way to the left. And because of that, you can see that this is the one on the left by simulation that is without the cover. But then the one on the right, when you try to put the plastic cover on top of the two by two array, you can see that there's some kind of ripple effect on that, and actually destroy the whole thing. So, uh, so obviously in, in, in this block, it says that uh, it still the antennas can be efficiently integrated behind the plastic or glass cover by engineering the cover geometry to act as a lens, or even behind the metal cover by some kind using some kind of electromagnetic windows. So today I'm going to talk about this window. Uh, so before that, uh, I remember uh, back in 2018, uh, there's a Dr. Huang, uh, Huang Fan Chu from, uh, from China who's working in vivo. At that time, uh, in 2018, he talked about using some kind of material known as the zirconium dioxide, ZRO2. And he says that by, and he, he, he talked about two, two kinds of uh, statement. He say, says that the first thing we need to take note of is that the thickness of the ceramic must be an integer multiple of a 0 0.5 lambda g. This is something we need to remember. That's the first thing. Because if we can do that, then we can benefit the antenna performance to approach the free space performance. And next, he says that there will be a strong focusing effects on the radiation pattern. And if, when the thickness of the ceramic are either close or equal to a multiple of 0 0.25 lambda g, and the gaps or and the gaps between the uh, ceramic and the antenna array are close or equals to an integer multiple of 0 0.5 lambda g. So he tries to convince convince us by showing a picture down here. Now I did saw uh, uh, Dr. Huang. I wasn't sure if he's here. And anyway, I uh, just show us this picture, uh, which which um, at the top left corner down here is the one at free space. The two by two antenna at free space. You can see that the radiation pattern is a really nice uh, uh, broadside pattern. But then you can see that in here, uh, when you try to load that with uh, a plastic, a, 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 a ZRO2 ceramic on top of that. Now remember, T is the thickness of the ceramic, G is the gap between the ceramic and the, uh, and the, and the antenna. So in this case, right now, if you look very carefully, now it says that it will be more sensitive to the gap variation, meaning that if the thickness of the ceramic is approximately about, about 0 0.5 millimeter, which is very close to 0 0.2, but it's a quarter wavelength a lambda g, you can see that no matter how much gap you increase or decrease, the ripple effect still exists. It is still there. And, and if you look very carefully here, when g becomes 0 0.5 lambda 0, then you've got this really, really sharp effect, the concentrated effect, and I'll talk about that because uh, uh, Dr. Huang doesn't talk about this, and I'll later I'll explain this if why why we why it happens. Now on the right side down here, uh, he tries to increase the thickness of this uh, of this ceramic substrate to 2.14, which is equal equivalent to one lambda g. Now in his previous statement, he says that it can be either 0 0.5 or one, 1 1.5, two, it's okay. So in this case, you choose 1.0 lambda g. You can see that the radiation pattern is back to normal, almost equivalent to a free space one. So because of this, uh, uh, we, we, we look further into Dr. Huang uh, uh, works, and we found that uh, in this case, he also tried on uh, plastic and glass. So for plastic, you can see that it says, now for plastic, because the uh, the epsilon r is close to three, and therefore uh, the when it's at three point one millimeter, then it has a zero point five. It's equivalent to zero point five lambda g. And from here, you can see very carefully. Uh, this is the gray one if it's free space, and the pink color one is the one at uh, when it's tuned to three point one uh, millimeter. As you can see from here, from the return loss, it is back to uh, exactly the same as in free space.
when you set the uh, thickness close to 0 0.5 lambda g. So you try to switch the uh, material from plastic to glass. Now in this case, the glass, the select epsilon r, which is that is constant, is 7. So in this case right now, when the thickness is equivalent to about 2 millimeter, it's also somewhere around 0 0.5 lambda g. And once again, from here, you can see from here very carefully, you can see that uh, this, from the green color, it is almost the uh, same as the one in free space. So here is the other uh, one on the uh, ceramic. I'm going to talk about that. Let's skip that. And as for the effects that we have seen in here, when you have an air gap of 0 0.5 lambda zero, what happened is that you, you created a, 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 an effect called the Fabry Perot effect. And for Fabry Perot cavity, that is, is, it says down here is that by placing a superstrate or dielectric substrate about half the wavelength, remember it's lambda zero. Uh, on top of the radiant element, then you'll be able to increase and, and the, the radiation pattern become very directive, as you can see from here. And then how much gain you got? You got about six or seven increase in your in your gain, which is uh, quite great. Now, so here's the objective F and uh, consideration uh, for, for my, my work. And so far, uh, only a two by two antenna array uh, with a superstrate or ceramic has been investigated by Dr. Huang. But then for a one by four array has never been discussed before. And when we were questioned by the reviewer, we think why not we do some investigation on that? So, uh, so when we investigated that, we tried to investigate the one with and without the window, and then we try to resolve the problem by putting certain kind of ceramic uh, on top of that. So here is the, uh, my work, uh, my previous work, which is published in this May. And uh, which is here. Uh, now, the, the size of the antenna is quite small overall, 1 by 4, about 26 by 5 by uh, 1.524. And so the width is about 5 millimeter. And then has overlap 10 dB band with 28%, which can cover the entire 5 dB radio band. Very fit for uh, uh, an AIP antenna. So the isolation level between the, the adjacent antenna are greater than uh, 16 dB. And again, approximately make more than uh, 8, 8 dB. DBI and then total efficiency more than 68%. Now, so here are the measurement of our, our antenna. We are, we are using a TMY tech uh, uh, technology, a kind of devices that can help us to, to switch the beam of the antenna. And so below down here is the measure uh, uh, beam switching and the left down here are the uh, beam scanning uh, simulation. So now next week, because what happened is that the reviewer wants us to explain what happened when we put our antenna into actual smartphone. So we went to the HFSS and we found in the library there is an exact uh, model of a 5G antenna. So we try to modify it a little bit close to what uh, is, is exactly the same as in Samsung. So we got the uh, the camera, the, the glass and all this. You can see that the batteries are copper, the, the battery cell, uh, screen cells are copper. We got the camera lens, which is glass. We got the housing lens, screen glass. And, and everything, we put them exactly as what you, you have in a smartphone. And then we try to insert our millimeter wave antenna at one side of this, uh, of this smartphone. And we try to see what happened there. So here, here is the uh, entire picture of that, of when we put our antenna right into the smartphone by using simulation. And you can see that we have a closed window down here and the thickness of this plastic is approximately about 1.2 and the air gap between our antenna and the plastic uh, uh, frame is about two, two millimeter. And then let's see what happened in here. Now, if we look very carefully in here right now, we can see that before that we have a really, really nice uh, 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 beam uh, pointing out from, from, the, uh, from the Z direction. And then because of this, this plastic frame that, that loaded on top of it, then you can see that the whole whole uh, radiation pattern has been split into two. Something that looks like a, a, a conical pattern, as you can see from here at, at different direction. Obviously, the high band down here, the impedance matching is, is quite poor, and that is because of all the elements that were surrounding the antenna. Because of the glass, of the battery, and all this. So uh, the, the gain drops a little bit, the efficiency is okay, and the uh, S2 one is, is somewhere okay. So we try to cut it. As the same as what uh, Qualcomm has done, we try to cut a window into it. So by cutting a window into it, as you can see from here, now the win a window has been cut, 
from the same size as, as, the, uh, as the AIP antenna, then we, cut, we may try to cut it and then try going back and look at the radiation pattern. And this is before and this is after. You can see that once we, we cut a window onto it, then the whole radiation pattern returns back to normal. But then still we have the same question into that. Now we still have to cover the antenna. We cannot leave it open. And that's a question for it. So, so we have to find a solution uh, to that. And uh, so here's a, uh, so we, in here we see, it says that the plastic window obviously now is the root cause of this effect. But how are we going to resolve this, this, this window issue for our one by four ray? And so uh, next we're going to look at uh, a, a, some, a, a type of uh, a material known as the alumina 96% called AL203. Now we, we choose this material because it's one of the most popular ceramic substrate and uh, because of the excellent heat resistant, high mechanical strength and blah 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 and then you can see that we try to, uh, to this is the size of the, uh, the ceramic a length 34, a height 1.5 and a width of 4 I know that, thank you So uh, we try to stick it and, and put it on top of the uh, on top of our, our, our antenna, we obviously with an air gap of 2.13 and the thickness, uh, and the thickness of this is 1.5. And why we choose 1.5 is because the the, the, the the optimum epsilon r we, we found is 12. And as, as again, why we choose our epsilon r 12? Uh, the reason is because if we still remember uh, the statement given by Dr. Huang, the thickness of the ceramic must be an integer multiple of 0 0.5 lambda g. And as of it, you can see that uh, at, for the air gap is 2.13, so it's across, across, approximately about 0 0.2 lambda 0, less than 0 0.5 is okay. And then the thickness at 28 gigahertz is exactly 0 0.5. And we choose 20, now in this case for 25 gigahertz, it's approximately 0 0.433. Now if you remember, one of our resonance happens at 25, so we try to focus on uh, 25 gigahertz. And then this is the result from the table. You can see that as we slowly increase the, uh, the epsilon r, the decay of the, uh, the ceramic, and we begin to increase very close to 0 0.5 lambda, Z, lambda g, you'll be able to see that the gain begins to peak. So if you look, and then when you increase up to about 20, 30, 40, then the gain begins to drop at the positive z direction. And next I'm gonna show you exactly the, uh, the graph of it. So this is the DK, which is a direct constant. This is the peak gain, which is pointing at positive Z direction. And you can see that between uh, uh, epsilon R, between 11 to 16, we have a really nice uh, peak gain of approximately about uh, 12 uh, dBi, which means, okay, so again, it has been validated with this statement that the thickness must be at an integer multiple of approximately 0.5 uh, lambda G. So because of the, uh, Time given to me, I still got three minutes, so uh, I'm going to show you exactly uh, what happened when it goes to 9 epsilon and then when it goes to epsilon i is equal to 12, plus about 0 0.4 lambda g. You can see that uh, uh, now we have been covered by the, uh, by the ceramic and you can see that the, the, the radiation pattern is back almost the same as the, the one in, in free space. But then when we begin to increase up to 20, you can see that all the effects. The, the detrimental effects begins to surface out at 20 and then when I increase up to 30 you can see that the cycle begins to, to increase and then you can see all these ripple effects coming out again and then when you try to further increase that and then to 40 then be able to see that the gain has dropped very much and then the uh, radiation pattern has pointed to another direction instead of uh, pointing to the, uh, the Z direction and, not, and, and also the, uh, the entire uh, uh, impedance matching is, is really bad. So here's the conclusion. Uh, so we, we have investigated a 1, 1 by 4 millimeter wave antenna array, and then we we have found out that uh, indeed when you try to put a plastic cover on top of it, it does have a detrimental effects of it. And then we have to find a solution for that, and we found that by using a AL, AL203 ceramic, this A choosing the epsilon R as 12, we'll be able to have a really nice uh, uh, high gain effect again and it will be back to from the same as the, uh, the free space. So uh, so here is some of the story, late, uh, latest story from South Korea. It says that the 28 gigahertz band has been uh, 
has been cancelled. So some student came to me and said, what happened to Korea? I said, I don't know, I'm not for Korea. But anyway, uh, as you can see from here, uh, the millimeter wave, uh, the millimeter wave band has been cancelled. Uh, so uh, there's still a long way for us because uh, uh, it's expensive. All the operators know that they're losing money, but then still we believe that we should go forward to it and study the millimeter wave when we believe that it's the future for, for 5G. And the one of the previous uh, uh, speaker that says that it's, at the moment right now we're running between the sub-6 gigahertz is correct. But I do believe that millimeter wave is still uh, the future. And uh, if you want to read more, you can read the, uh, this, this May in the spectrum. It does uh, came, with the, came up with the same conclusion that the 5G network for millimeter wave are performing worse than we, we have expected. Uh, last but not least right now, this is one of the new book I've just published with, uh, with Wong Bing. I'm not quite sure if it's here. And uh, so uh, it's been published in January. And uh, if you're interested, you can uh, just scan this and you can write to me. Thank you very much then.